do this every day. So she, you were alone? I was always alone. Doesn't she know how hard this is? She was very sweet, but she wasn't present. Doesn't she get it? It's the chronic things that become our everyday. Like we find our person. It's the smallest words that can hurt somebody. The resilience and the beauty that lives within. I have you to thank for that. It's this feeling of anger and blaming. Oh, and yourself, you did the work. Walking through these halls, I found forgiveness. I'm Dr. Goodall, and this is Are You Awake? Welcome, everyone, to Are You Awake? I'm Dr. Goodall, and as you know, my show is all about awakening and listening to that deep whisper, that call of the soul within. And what we have today is something very special, a very special guest. You may have seen him all over the Internet, articles about him, Huffington Post, BuzzFeed. I think Good Housekeeping, it's gone viral, which he'll tell you about. His name is Mark Imuff a.k.a. Mark the Dog Guy. Have you heard about him? Well, he's agreed to be on our show today, and he's going to talk to us about what happens when you listen to that call of your soul. Mark, welcome. Thank you, Dr. Goodall. It's uh, so, such a pleasure to be on. Thank you. Thank you. You're so welcome. Mark, most people have been hearing about you. It's an interesting thing, you know. The world will go viral with negative stories, sad stories, heartbreaking stories all the time. And every now and then, a story like Malala, you know, the young girl who took a bullet, and now she speaks at the United Nations and speaks in in the White House. Those kind of stories go viral. And a story like yours will catch the heart of the world, and people just can't get enough about it. So our listeners are waiting with bated breath. Tell us a little bit about your story. Like, who are you? What happened? And who is Mark the Dog Guy? (laughs) <laughs> well, uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, I'm uh, I'm actually just another human soul, as most of your listeners are. Uh, I uh, I, but I'm actually very fortunate to be in a wonderful relationship, and uh, I was uh, I think I maybe like most people, uh, working uh, a job of long hours and uh, and coming home and uh, like just sort of running the rat race and everything and wondering how I could make a difference. And uh, last Was year... It, I'm sorry, I interrupted you. Go ahead, please. My, my apologies. Last year, about this time, uh, well, actually it was in April, we adopted, well, my, my fiance and I had two dogs. They were her dogs. Uh, but then we adopted a third dog, a, uh, a pit bull from... Uh, from oh actually we were alerted to it from a site called Susie Senior Dogs on Facebook and she let us know about this pit bull that was at uh, Sean Casey Animal Rescue and we went over and we adopted her and uh, when we brought her home I mean like actually she didn't look like her picture and she she actually was really sad looking and uh, we almost didn't pick her up it's just it was such a long ride to get out to her that we brought her back or actually my fiance brought her back and I said, you know, I think she needs a bath, and uh, I think that'll help her spirits. And uh, just the dirt just came off her in cakes and cakes, and uh, and her spirits did rise because, like, she, she, I think she felt better. She felt, like, supported. I mean, I know I take a shower every day. Just imagine if you went for two or three months without a shower, how you might feel about yourself. And, uh, and that was really the beginning of the idea of Mark the Dog Guy. Although I still then went to work for another about almost a year, uh, <laughs> and uh, and uh, but but yeah, but I'll continue that. I guess I'll let you speak right now. Thank you. Oh no no no, that's okay. I interrupted you earlier because there's so many questions I have for you, and I know everybody has these questions, so we're just going to leave that in there. Susie's, what is that? Susie's older dog? Oh, uh, Susie's senior dogs. It's it's Susie's on Facebook. Dog. It's on Facebook. I've noticed she has hundreds of thousands of followers, and she helps senior dogs find homes. Is that right? Yes. She actually has communications with shelters around the country oh, uh, about senior dogs because most people, they, they want a puppy, and they right. like uh, right. par- parents have a small child, and they want the puppy to grow up with the child and all that kind of stuff. And so these, these these senior dogs are, are overlooked, and they just they're just loving animals, and a lot of them are in there mm-hmm. for just reasons like maybe the the, the family moved to a no pet uh, building, so they had to give up the dog, or uh, oh, I mean wow. there, there there's a multitude of reasons why these dogs could end up in the shelter, but they're there, 
And they're just amazing you know, creatures. Aww. They are. My dog was a senior dog. I adopted a rescue dog. He was 10. He had the best retirement ever. I always say it's the best. He had a hard life. He had a great retirement. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, that's, so that's, you, sort of like, that's what we say about Cleo also. I mean, Cleo has been out, finally totally come out of her shell. I mean, and then also like a lot of pit bulls end up in the, sh- in the, in the shelters because uh, people think yeah. pit bulls are adorable as puppies. Uh and they're such high energy dogs also and everything that uh but then also there's a lot of building restrictions so people move to a building and they say, Well no pit bulls and uh well there's a whole there's a whole slew of things that uh, I don't want to get into right now. We can maybe discuss sure, it later sure. if you want me to go into it, but uh but it's No just, no no let let's, uh, let's I know what you mean. But it's uh, very yeah, difficult. So. But the thing it sounds like you had a little empathic connection though when you brought the dog home. Sounds like you were yeah feel that the dog needed something because most people wouldn't say a bath will lift the dog's spirits. Most people would say, oh, this dog's filthy. Let me give him a bath, you know? Right, you right. felt something off of, that, off of your dog. Is that when you first noticed you could, you're a little bit like the whisperer, you could hear a dog's feelings? Um, I guess, well, I don't want to necessarily say I'm a dog whisperer because sometimes when I think that too much, that's when I get bit because <laughs> because I think I can work magic and then the dog's like, no, you're not going to work your magic on me. So, uh, but, oh, that's uh, great. But, uh, but I mean, but I, I, I do think that it's just, it's a matter of, uh, I'm like maybe a dog, uh, therapist or physical therapist and maybe like uh like you go in with an injury to a therapist and then the doctor will say you have to straighten out that leg and you're like well it hurts when i straighten my leg it's like well you have to if you want to feel better and you're like no i don't want to and you might even get in a big argument with the doctor but then you'll finally do it or or he'll sort of quote force you to do it and then all of a sudden it works and you're like oh my god this is amazing and then you feel so much better and i say that's a lot of the transformation Aww. that comes over the dogs is they're like this hurts, don't do this to me, but then once it's done, they're like, oh, my God, and they're jumping all over me and licking my face and so happy and everything. Oh, isn't that the best feeling? Just want to back for a second because it sounds like, okay, you're not the whisperer because that gets you, that's hilarious because the minute we go into our ego, right, the minute we're like, yeah. oh, I'm the whisperer, you get bit in the butt. I mean, that's life. It's a beautiful <laughs> analogy. I love it. It is perfect. But you, <laughs> but you do seem to have a, some intuition, which is very helpful and, and a connection and a bond with these animals. What the dog guy does is he's, well, he quit his job. And, Mark, you are donating your time to the shelters to cleaning up the abused mangy stray dogs so that they're beautiful and uplifted in spirit and people can adopt them. Is, is, that's the story, right? That, that, that's is, really, the, that's really right? the gist of the story. That's really the gist of the story is that, uh, is that well, I, I just like to say my job ended. And, uh, okay. and, divine uh, timing, maybe. Yeah, yeah, it was divine timing. And uh, I think that I was in a fortunate position with my fiancé that, when that job ended, she looked at me, and this was about maybe eight, six to eight months after we had that first experience with Cleo, and then we adopted Fenton, a second pit bull, on top of that, uh, and then that was four dogs in this household, which was uh, pretty chaotic at, at first, but now they're just the most loving, caring animals. But uh, I was fortunate enough that when my job ended, I had other offers and everything to, to, to go in interviews and things like that. And actually, they were financially very, very lucrative. And uh, But they, a lot of them were going to take me on travel, take me away from my dogs and other things like that. And, and uh, my fiance looked at me and she's like, you know, I have real costs right now. Like, I have four dogs. Paying a dog walker for four dogs is pretty astronomical in New York City for for two or three walks a day. In addition oh to, to grooming, to, to addition to grooming them and things like that, and et cetera. So she's like, these are real costs. If you take that over for me, I can pay you instead of paying somebody else. That'll be sort of your startup fees or startup funds for your business. And then as you do, do, attract different clients on top of that, then that'll just be how Mark the Dog Guy grows. And oh, so you uh, had this in your heart. You had this in your heart. It was a dream for you. Absolutely. It was, it was totally. Oh. And then actually, well, actually, I went to the dog grooming school, and the first dog I worked on, Ernie, uh, 
I actually, when I looked at him, and I, I, I must apologize to dog lovers, but when I looked at him, I said, this dog is ugly, and he's mean, and he had a bad overbite, and actually, most of his overbite, he spent trying to bite me. Oh, and, and And I was like, you know, this, this is just not right and everything, and I, was, I sort of almost threw up my hands in frustration, but... That yeah. was because he was in pain. I, I didn't realize what matted fur was until that time. I mean, matted fur is oh. just, I mean, imagine basically your hair all tied up in knots, as tight as it, could, as it is to your scalp, then like glue poured on top of it. So then every time you move, it hurts. So like you move left, oh. you move right, your hair is pulling. If somebody tries to brush it out, there actually is no way to brush it out. I mean, all you can do is really just rip the hair out when you try and brush it out. So it's, it's very painful for the dog to do anything. And so the dog was in pain. So like, I mean, if I was in a lot of pain and somebody came up and says, hey, I want to be your friend, I'd be like, uh, yeah, I'm in pain right now. I don't need any friends. Just stay away from me. I, d- I don't want to be in pain. And that's what this dog was basically saying to me. Uh. You can oh, just so, hear the love. You can just hear the love and the caring in your heart. And all of and, us and animal lovers, all of us dog <laughs> lovers are just in tears right now. Oh, well, my goodness. Then, I, I didn't know that hurt them. I didn't know that hurt them. Yeah, and then I bathed him. And actually, I had to bathe him three times because the dirt just kept coming out of him and out of him. But then after the oh. three baths, actually, he changed colors. He was, a, he was like a, a sort of a, a dull drab brown and black. And he turned into almost a white dog, basically an off-white dog after the three baths wow. and, and the cut. Wow. And uh, wow. it was amazing and everything. And then uh, I guess one other quick story is about Sean. Uh, when I get to, Sean was the first dog I worked on at the shelter, so I like to talk about my first. And uh, mm. Sean was the first dog that I worked on at, at, the, at the animal care center. And... Um, I think they gave me one of the most difficult dogs first because he was a red, which means he's a biter and uh, and actually was unadoptable uh, from the animal care center because he didn't pass his behavior test. Well, he didn't pass his oh, behavior wow. test because he was in pain also. He was very severely mad and things like that. So, like, if you look on my on either my Instagram page or my, my Facebook page, Sean is a white dog and he has this really mean look on his face and he's completely almost like a puffy fur over him, but that's basically like a layer of shag carpet glued to his skin that, that hurts every time oh. he moves. Oh. Once I got that off of him and his, his after picture, he's sitting back, his his face is so relaxed, his paws are crossed in front of him, and what, what was his leash, but it actually looks like a blue ribbon around his neck. He's just sitting there smiling and everything, like, thanks, oh, dog guy. And, uh, and he so, actually got so out. That's so rewarding. It was so rewarding. Well, that, that's actually, I think, I'm a sort of, I think one of my, um, if I say, uh, one of my, I'd say, I, I, I don't want to say negative things about myself, but one, one of the things that I like is the, 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 where one of my, my guilty pleasures is that I like instant gratification. And so uh, ah, one of the things about grooming a dog is it is, it is it is instant gratification because I can look at that dog after it's done in 99% of the time and see this, this dog who's now this loving, wonderful animal that this is like, I've got a good oh. do, I look good, I feel better, and I'm going to have a forever home soon. Did he get adopted? Did Sean get adopted? Uh, Sean got to what's called a new hope shelter. If they're on the on the, the the behavior list, they need to be sponsored by another shelter to leave the animal care center. But he left, I think, okay. three days after I groomed him. Ah, oh, so he got promoted. He got promoted exactly. He got promoted, <laughs> and so uh, wonderful, so. wonderful. That's great. That's great. So, Mark, tell tell people how they can start following you and, and find you know hear more of these stories and to see what's going to happen to Mark the oh, dog. Oh, great! Yes, yes. Giving uh, well, life yes. back, giving life back to these animals. How do we find you? Well, uh, the the easiest way is probably on Instagram at Mark the Dog Guy, all one word, okay. uh, Mark the Dog Guy, and then on okay. Facebook, it's also Mark the Dog Guy on Facebook and everything. And uh, you can you can find all most of my stories on a whenever I'm at the shelter. I try to that day take before and after pictures and tell a little story about the dog. I can do a little bit more on Facebook than I can on Instagram, but it's nice and everything. 
Wonderful. So at Mark the Dog Guy, all one word on Instagram, Mark the Guy on Facebook, Susie's Senior Dogs. If you know anybody that wants to adopt a rescue, you know, check out Susie's Senior Dogs. Mark the Dog Guy. In summation, you always loved animals. You love instant gratification. You clearly care because your voice changes, your energy changes, your vibration changes when you talk about how these dogs feel cared for and come to life. I learned that I did not know that mange hurt. I did not know that these stray dogs were in pain from that as well. I mean, obviously, I knew they were in pain. And that's something for all of us to know, you know, and dogs aren't mean animals, right? They, they are protecting themselves as best as they can. Someone like you has had the opportunity to follow your dream, but also because you listen to the call of your soul. You could have also said no. As much as I love animals, I'm going to go chase the buck and get a you know, more lucrative position and keep my professional name instead of being called Mark the Dog Guy. You know, I'm a Mark the White Collar Guy. You didn't do that. You had a choice, and you followed your heart. And so many people, Mark, want to do that, and they don't get to. But we certainly can enjoy this vicariously through you. And to see these animals come to life with just some love and caring from the non-whisper. <laughs> we'll call you Mark the Dog Guy, the non-whisper. But you clearly are very intuitive. I'm so grateful you're on the show today. Any last Well, thank minute? you for having me. Oh, goodness. Thank you for your time. Any last-minute words to anybody who loves dogs or who wants to listen to the call of their soul? How did you... Well, well, I guess if, if you love your dog, I guess the most important thing is, I mean, I'm just one groomer, but there's groomers around the country who also care and love your dogs as well. And so I guess a regular grooming for anybody's dog is very important and everything to make sure they all get haircuts uh, on mm-hmm. a regular basis to, to keep them clean and, and in good shape. And then uh, as far as, uh, as as far as anything else, I think that, um, sort of like in Field of Dreams, if you build it, they will come. Uh, I think yeah. if you follow your heart, it will come too. I agree with you, and this is exactly what my show is all about. My life's mission is about helping people tap into that. So last question, a very Dr. Goodall, are you awake question. How did you know, how did you experience that resonance inside of you when you had a choice to follow your dream or to continue, you know, holding on to an identity that was something different was it a feeling you had how did you know the knowing hmm that's actually an interesting question I I think I think it's I've been in recovery a little while and I think it was Mm -hmm. it wasn't necessarily that I instantly knew but it was that I kept taking steps in that right direction and realizing that I was feeling better and better each time I went in that direction versus oh. the other direction. Wow. That's the best answer anyone's given me in a very, very, very long time. It's the most concrete and practical answer. If you step towards it and you feel good, if you step towards something else and you feel bad, there's your answer learning to listen and to trust that. So you trusted that. You trusted maybe your 12-step experience. You said you were in recovery. Yes. That helped you. Yeah. Mark, thank you for that. Perfect way to wrap up our interview today. Bless you. May you have lots and lots of people continue to tap into this story because it touches us on so many levels. And go have a wonderful day and keep making dogs happy, which makes all the rest of us happy. Thank you so much for having me on. It's such a wonderful joy to spread this message. It certainly is. All right, everybody. Mark the dog guy. Thank you so much, Mark. Have a great day. You too. Thanks. Bye-bye. Okay, that was a lot of fun. Really appreciate it, Mark. I'm off. Mark the dog guy. Isn't it fabulous? Here's some guy, has this identity, professional identity, working, but always has in his heart this love of animals, this connection, this bond. Obviously, you can tell it just brings him alive as well as the animals he works with. And he had the opportunity, but that's not an accident. You know, when we really, really want something, the opportunity does come. It does actually knock. We have to be able to see it. And can we always grab it? Maybe, maybe not, or maybe we don't feel we can. Just regardless, remember, if we really stay awake and look, and we yearn for something deep in our hearts, it happens. And not only did this happen for Mark, which is great, right? He gets to bring the spirit up of the animals that he's working with and find them a home and 
you can see that that does something for him at that deep personal level. But at the same time, something for all of us, for every single one of us. And for Mark, the story went viral. Phones ringing off the hook, online articles, you know, BuzzFeed, Huffington Post, Good Housekeeping, Are You Awake? We grabbed him right up. Why? Why did that go viral? Well, because of this, exactly this thing that I've just said. We all want to know that the soul's yearning can happen, that the call of our soul can happen. And sometimes we make an active choice for our family, for our children, to not follow that soul call because it doesn't feel right. And that's okay. But don't forget it came. Don't forget we can create it. And from the choices we make, we can create different calls of the soul, different yearnings for the soul. It's about being awake and listening. I absolutely loved his answer. How did you know? Well, when I walked towards it, I felt better. So it felt to me like he was doing that in the actual behavioral world, like maybe working with the dogs, trying it out, and he just felt better and he came more alive. But we can do that in our imagination. We can visually try it on. And we can try it on and walk around with it, whatever it is, whatever. But if you can't see it, you can't have it, right? Build it, they will come, he said. If we can't see it, it can't happen. Period. It's very, very powerful. So if we can only see a dollar, we can only make a dollar. You know, think about so many of us that break the family taboos, being the first one to get an education or the first one to make a certain amount of money or the first one who comes out as gay, being the first in generations of families, breaking those limits, breaking the chains of the genetic code of what is and what can't be. Okay, all that's for another show. This is about Mark the Dog Guy following the call of your soul. Today, we're starting kind of a new thing. We, I have two people, healers themselves, Susan Bones, who will be playing today, and Carrie Roberts, who will on another day, who so gracefully shared their healing music with Are You Awake and with me. Tuning forks, singing bowls, and in and of themselves, these vibrations are healing. And we're now from here forward, I'm going to use those sounds as part of the awareness activation exercises. So for today, today's about following the call of your soul. Today's about how one man's story grabbed the soul all around the world, grabbed us. We couldn't get enough. You know, maybe there'll be a movie made about him. Doesn't matter. Forever after, the story of Mark the Dog Guy is part of our story. So sit back, take a quick minute, take a deep breath, and just listen to the vibration. Allow the vibration of Susan's healing energy come through in her tuning forks. Just allow that to happen and I will step in at the end and guide to wrap it up. But today, just feel the joy, the happy of Mark. Feel how that made us all happy. And let the vibration just move through your energy centers, move through your system. Because remember, sound is the wave of all creation. Let's keep the joy in our souls and our bodies. Let the happy of Mark, the happy it created in us, the memories, the beauty of love unconditionally, following our heart, having people notice and see and validate that. Feel that for him, feel that for us, feel that for each and every one of you. Feel that within you and around you as these sounds move through you, healing, awakening, balancing, centering. Breathe the sounds in and let them be. Till next time.
walk sacred.